Hello everybody, it is Ed, and today we are going to be doing a review on Stephen King's new book, If It Bleeds. So this is the new book that was released just like a week ago or something like that, and uh, I've just tried to like get through it really quickly uh, because I wanted to get a review out, but that didn't work out because I'm a slow reader. Anyway, I will be breaking down this video into four different parts, going to each of the four different uh, stories within this, because it's a short story or a novella collection. So if you do want to skip around between the short stories, go ahead and look in my description. I should have timestamps for, uh, for each of these stories, but I will be going over all of them at the end, kind of just putting it together and and reviewing the entire series or entire you know book itself as a whole but just to get things straight i did think that this was a pretty good uh bordering on like really good uh, novella collection so going on with that the first story in this entire book is called mr harrigan's phone this one was a very interesting story because usually when you enter a book of like short stories or novellas you want to make the first one like a really eye-catching a really interesting one and while this was a good story uh i found it really interesting that it was the first one it, it wasn't that great because there are other stories in this that are way more better and way more interesting than this story this is the most stephen king story i think uh this story really does sound like a stephen king topic if i gave you the synopsis you would think wow that is like just like that's just a classic Stephen King story and I, I totally respect that because it's one of those things of King trying to like return to form in terms of just idea uh, some people think new King is becoming even better than old King right now but right now you can see that the idea is a really old King idea and it, it's uh, he came out when about the new iPhone came, which is, I believe, 2004 or something. I don't know. I'm not that old. I don't remember that. Um, but it's really interesting how he kind of takes that idea and embellishes it into a story that's legitimately, like, really uh, interesting. That's, that's, like, new. That's um, something I wouldn't have expected because I've never thought of the story as a, you know, as a possibility. It's a really original idea, and I, I enjoyed it for that. One of the problems with it, though, is that it's called Mr. Harrigan's phone, and you don't really get that idea until about, like, halfway through the book. This is a common problem throughout all of these stories. We don't really understand what the book is about until we get to like the halfway or to the three quarters point and it seems like it takes a lot long time to get to the point that's not to say it isn't interesting because it, all of these stories are interesting um, but what you generally do in a story is you kind of make maybe the first quarter or maybe like the first chapter something like that uh, that interesting without in introducing the original big plot um, but Stephen King he really pushes that off until much much later to the point where I was legitimately very very confused as to where the story was going because I had no idea what was happening like we we kind of open up into this kid and uh, he's just kind of chilling he's just kind of doing stuff he's reading books to this old guy Mr. Harrigan but we don't know where the phone comes in we don't have any idea until we get to halfway and then after that we get to about the halfway or two-thirds point and that's when we finally understand oh that's the plot and it takes so long until we get to the plot that I really feel like the first part of the story is really really uh, not boring I wouldn't say but just it seems like it's something that should have been cut down a lot even though it was interesting it just wasn't relevant in my opinion so overall the story was it was, it was a good story it was very enjoyable and it was very Stephen Kingy so for that since it was actually a good story I'm gonna give it a two stars for those of you not familiar two stars is a good rating in my opinion I, I enjoyed it if it was two stars now moving on to the next story this one is called the life of Chuck this is I think my favorite story uh, of this book it's definitely my story of favorite story of this book I think it's my favorite novella that he has written even though I haven't read that many of his novellas and in my even be my favorite short form fiction that he has written uh, I can't think of anything cooler than this this was such a good idea just in theory and in practice it worked out amazingly three different stories that just they were independently written and he kind of just thought you know what if I what happens in the next part of the story what happens in the next part of the story they were years apart and uh, I feel like what we ended up with is something that was edited together and thought up that is just brilliant what I mean by that is the way that the story is made is just brilliant now the story is also fairly interesting it's very interesting in my opinion uh, but that is really mainly due to the structure of the story so I don't want to go into too much detail about the structure because that is part of the story I, I believe but in general what it starts off with is when you immediately open up you will see uh, the amazing life of Chuck or something like that Chuck Krantz something like that act three that's what it'll say and you'll, you're gonna be confused I was confused I was thinking oh maybe my maybe my book has like missing pages or something but it, that wasn't the case it, it, it turned out to be uh, an amazing uh, interesting just wild ride something that is so original something that I've just never thought of before that I've never seen before and it just continues down with the second and third story in just such a brilliant way uh, I cannot express how interesting just the idea of this story is usually when I tell people about the plot of the story they think it's good but when I tell people about the structure they're like wow that's really smart that's so cool and I, in my opinion it, it is the same thing the only weak point of this entire story in my opinion is Chuck Krantz himself I feel like even though he's a interesting character by the end and at the beginning of it, he as a main character just doesn't feel like he carries it. Uh, the structure is what carries it. But he as a main character doesn't really feel like he has a really 
big personality or an interesting personality. It's more the situations around him and the people around him that make the story so great. And uh, at the same time, also the second part of the story, the second story, that, that was kind of weak. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It worked out with the structure, so I'm all good with that. But it, if you take that story on its own and think about it, like just reading it on your own, it just wouldn't be a good story. It, it's only good in the context of everything else, while the first and third stories were good on their own. They were they were just really interesting stories on their own. I, I do give this a four star because this was just great. This was fantastic. This has changed uh, the way I look at story structure, which is just awesome. The third story, If It Bleeds, this uh, stars Holly Gibney. And uh, according to the ending, uh, uh, the author's note this was the most interesting story for him to write because he really wanted to write a story about the subject and then he finally realized oh holly gibney is one of my favorite characters and so he put these two together and he went along with it uh, i think this is the weakest story in my opinion it, it is the longest story by a lot i believe this, this uh, book in itself is half of the entire book that that really made me feel like it was a very drawn out story and there's a lot of specific points about it that i really think are negative but to first off i, I want to point out the positive which is that holly is an interesting character i feel that she is always having something interesting going on and so i don't want to really rip on her character too much even though i will a little bit uh but she's a good character i think that she has very good values set in place around her she's very well overall defined just makes it so that it's a very believable piece of work and just small things like that make the story like a good story it's, it's, a, it's a good story overall but there's a lot of problems to go along with that there's, there's a lot of things that i'm thinking of that are not very good about the story uh first things first holly gibney even though she is a very interesting character while i read about her i find that she is a bit annoying uh, there's a couple things about her because she she's supposed to have many men mental illnesses but i feel like just I, I don't know, it, it feels like it's just off somehow. Um, even though the idea, the, the thought behind it was very interesting and I think that a majority of it was pulled off right, there were many points within the story, maybe five or six, where I stopped and I thought, no, don't do that. And it, it just felt that way for me. It felt very fake, it felt very artificial. And there's just a couple points in that where I really felt like that. There's one point right before the climax that felt very artificial, that felt like it was very out of the blue. Even though it makes sense for this character, I feel like the way it was written felt out of blue. Another thing that I didn't really like about the story was just how it felt unnecessary, even though it, it's kind of confusing for me because like it's a good story, but compared to the story that came behind before it, this is more or less a sequel to The Outsider. The, the story that came before it, The Outsider, was a very good story. I think that it introduced all of this so well, kind of put everything in place in just a really fun, big, interesting way. Now, this story, if it bleeds, just kind of follows that but just kind of like leans on its coattails. It doesn't really introduce too much new stuff on its own, except for Holly Gibney's own life. The only thing that it, it introduces is her life, so there's not that much interesting stuff going on because the main plot is the supernatural thing, and it's very, very interesting. If you've read The Outsider, you know what it is, and it's very interesting to go in that direction, kind of talk about it, um, but it doesn't introduce anything new, which is why I felt like the amount of content that was really allotted to it felt like too much. Another problem is that, you know, while that was the interesting part because that was the interesting part that was the plot right the outsider plot continuing that was the plot of the story that was maybe a third or a half of the story it, there's so much other stuff in here and while she is an interesting character i felt like these two plots did not mix together they felt like they did not come together in any way it's just holly gibney being holly gibney in this side and then holly gibney with the main uh, police style investigator plot in this side and they just did not mesh and it felt like the story just went on and on and on it just was so boring because so much stuff happened in here that just did not matter to us because we were interested here not to say that this wasn't interesting but to have a chapter about this and then immediately come back to this and then go back to this is just so annoying because there's such an interesting plot going on here something that is legitimately engaging exciting new fresh something that is just like really exciting and here it's just something more thoughtful something more slow and it's not uninteresting but it's just does not match the excitement from the other story so it really does fall flat because of all of this not living up to all of this and uh, at the same time this not living up to the outsider so overall i felt like this was a very laggy story there were so many plot lines introduced that just went nowhere that just felt not interesting at all there was just a bunch of stuff points where i just felt like this was just not believable the writing itself wasn't very good it's definitely not a bad story uh I, but i wouldn't read it again i think that's the best way to put it so i will give this one a one out of five because i just didn't enjoy it. And then the fourth book, Rat. Uh, this one's such a weird story because it really does fall in line with the Holly Gibney story. Like I said before, 
all of these stories have this very similar thing where they go on for maybe half the book and then finally we get the main plot and then we finish it off in the other half of the book. They all do this and um, if it bleeds, really does it I think in the worst way because it takes so long for anything to really really interestingly happen. But then we get to finally the point of a uh, rat and uh, this is where that is done but I think it is done in the best way that you can do that kind of structure. So to be specific on that, what happens is there's a very interesting plot to me anyway. I'm not sure if anyone would find this interesting but for people who read books or write this would be a very interesting topic and it's it's very fun it's very quick we we get quick uh, lines here and there and then we get to the halfway point and we realize oh so there was a little plot going on and then a bigger plot which we thought was going to be the main plot and then obviously it's called a rat and then the finally the rat shows up about halfway through and the rat is introduced in such a weird way that it's like it's so weird this is such a Stephen Kingy story because it's like nobody else could write this nobody else could write a story like this because it's so funny if you just try to like tell somebody what the story is about it's just the funniest thing but Stephen King does it and I didn't laugh and it worked it just worked because it was stuck halfway it was stuck right after like some other main plots so that these main plots were all always going on and they were very interesting plots and then this this rat showed up and embellished all of those plots to a very interesting way and everything kind of just became better because of it and so this rat is of course the focal point of the story because it affects everything previously in such a way that everything after it becomes more interesting even though the rat is only there for such a short amount of time it's interesting like it's very good the only sub the only problem i have with it is that near the ending there's a lot of times when we kind of just go slow we kind of like we finish off the plot and then we kind of just have some chapters of just thinking you know it was good because of what was previously happening right it continued that storyline which is great but in the end it really didn't capture its own unique style it didn't have anything interesting going on for itself so if it was me i would have cut out those last few pages but in stephen king he can do whatever he wants uh this one i would give it three stars to now that you've probably understood all my thoughts uh I, you can you can totally tell that my best to worst ranking is the amazing life of chuck uh probably the rat mr harrigan's phone and then if it bleeds going from four stars three stars two stars one stars so overall this would be a 2.5 stars but i'm going to i'm not sure what i'm going to do to it uh i guess i'll keep it the same i think i'll keep it round down and go to two stars uh because it was a very good story but i felt like it had a lot of small issues that really kept bugging me throughout the story two out of five if you don't know doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean I enjoy it and it was a very good story and I'm, I'm very happy that I read it. Uh, it might change to three stars if you check my Goodreads later on, but we'll see how this goes. In general, this is a very good short story collection uh, or novella collection. And so if you do want to read something that is shorter by Stephen King, I would recommend going for this. Uh, Mr. Harrigan's phone is a very good idea and the uh, same as Rat. Those are some very good Stephen Kingy stories that are just legitimately good stories. And if you read those books and you really enjoy that kind of style, I feel like you would enjoy Stephen King overall. So overall, this was a very good story. Uh, the Holly Gibney story was unfortunately a disappointment. That might just be because I didn't read the Bill Hodges trilogy yet. Uh, but so far, from what I understood just from, from like Holly Gibney's life, apparently she is a minor character in uh, the Mercedes trilogy anyway. So I don't know if this would have that would have helped, but she didn't interest me as much as she should have due to the size of the story and the amount of uh, story focus on her, if that makes any sense. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you have read the book and you have maybe, you know, I hope you've enjoyed it yourself as well. If you have any thoughts on it, if you disagree with me, if you agree with me, or if you want to discuss anything in general, uh, hopefully you guys can leave a comment down below. I, I really want to hear what you guys think of If It Bleeds in particular, as well as the uh, Mr. The, the Amazing Life of Chuck, if you found that as amazing as I did. So I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this review please hit that like button I, I would very much appreciate it and it would make me very happy also if you enjoyed the style of review if you enjoy Stephen King books review uh, because I have all Stephen King books and I will continue reading them um, then go ahead subscribe but take a look at my channel if you see anything that interests you maybe subscribe because of that I read a lot of fantasy and I read a lot of epic fantasy I read a lot of you know Stephen King I just read whatever uh, you can just see my channel and see what kind of stuff I read so that's pretty much all I have for you guys today thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video goodbye also stay safe with the quarantine we kind of i'm going to talk a little bit because i don't care um we had to like go to costco the first day so that i could read the book immediately right that's what i wanted to do uh, to get a review out as, as soon as i can uh but my dad went and uh they just didn't bring it down it was on release day it was supposed to be released we called them they said yes it'll be down uh but they just didn't bring it down and they can't like pick up those big boxes off the shelves and put it down right so there was nothing they could do so i had to like figured out a way to read this. So I, I got the Kindle or the uh, the EPUB version of the book and I just read that. Uh, and it's been kind of annoying, especially with Holly Gibney because she just went on and on and on. I just kept scrolling like, dude, it's so boring. The climax itself was just kind of lame. Um, but you know, 
it wasn't that bad. Uh, we got through. I got through uh, Rat fairly quickly because I just read that right now. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun. I think just to you know have something new to read over the quarantine. I, I think that that was pretty great. So uh, I don't know if you guys uh, really want to see some new Stephen King. This is definitely worthwhile. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, bye bye.